Try and find him, will you? Where's Sue on. gone? Hello, Frank Walters. Yes? Oh, yes, Mr. Purcell. Yes, he should be with you this afternoon. No, he was in court this morning. He what? <laughs> well, he must have forgotten. Yes, I'll make sure he's there this afternoon. Yeah, bye bye. Don't well, forget it, will you? I'll Where's call Sue? Back after lunch. Yeah, okay. She's up at Highmore. Well, when, she wrote in. when she comes back, tell her I want to see her about these. Right, uh, Jimmy brought the sports stuff. Oh, yeah, I want to talk about that too, but later. Right. And when Ted gets back, tell him he must see Purcell this afternoon. Right. Well, put it in the diary. Come in. Well, you took your time, didn't you? Yeah, these are all right. Um, not these three, but these three, She's not all right? Back yet. She won't be back till after lunch. What? Have you seen the sports stuff? Later. Where's Ted? Still at the court. I'll be in the pub now. Come on. Just finished. I've been here only five minutes. Oh, yes. Well, we'll have the same then. Get anything this morning? No, not much. Two pints, please. Oh, why? Remember that young lad, Langley? Broke up a cab, stole a motorbike, got on probation. Ah, oh, well, he was up again this morning. Breach of probation, theft of another motorbike, fined ten pounds, three months to pay. Huh? Well, a man gets up in court, he slips out and pays the fine. Samaritan or relative? Well, he said he wasn't a relative. Nothing to do with Langley. Yeah. But he'd come up from London to be there. With the money. The exact ten pounds? Well, no, a stack. Thirty quid or more in notes. So as he won't have to give a check, see? Just the money and away. Do you want me to guess or are you going to tell me? Well, I don't know. I'm just telling you. He didn't speak to the lad. He just sat quiet. Then he paid the fine and went. You speak to Lang? Does he know who he was? No, he doesn't. Then his mother does, doesn't she? Do you want me to follow it up? Yes, but you should have done that this morning instead of coming here. But first, you see Purcell. And then you follow it up. What's going on? I don't know. I've just come.
Gazette. What's happened? She, she was sitting there in that chair. I, I went down village shopping, only about 20 minutes. And when I come back, she was there, just sitting. Well, who? I don't know. Just a girl. I thought there was a man with a breaking in like, so I went for Mr. Miller. He'd come back with me and she was still there, just sitting. I thought maybe she was asleep like, so I spoke to her. Then I shook her. She wasn't sleeping. Are you all right now, Molly? No. I'm from Gazette. Susan Jackson. All oh, right. You do fashions, don't you? Yes. I don't understand about this girl. Was she ill? She was dead, miss. Sitting there, dead. Do you know who she is? No. No. She was a stranger, miss. Police had people up from village. Nobody knows her. Well dressed she was. Like from town, not village. When you came in, what did you do? Well, it was just like she was sleeping. Mrs. Ackroyd here, she went and shook her a little. Then I went to phone. I told police the girl had been too ill, but maybe even worse than that. Police brought the doctor along and he said she were dead. And police asked us if we knew her and then they got neighbours in and asked them the same thing. Don't worry, Lasco, you'll be all right. Come and sit down, look. Come on, there's a good girl. What was she like? I mean, what age? About 20, thereabouts. Oh, I'd say about that. She didn't have anything on her with an address? A handbag? No, no handbag. They tried her pockets. Ah, there were a little bottle, but of course police took that. She just came in here. Mm. Door was open. Always is. She was very young. Just sitting there like she were resting. <laughs> Mrs. Ackroyd, have you any grown-up children? A son, perhaps? No. Or a daughter? Maybe she was a friend. No, miss. Her daughter died. Oh. When nobody here knows her at all? She were a stranger, miss. You can ask anyone. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Ackroyd. Mr. Miller, I'm sorry to have troubled you. Right. Sorry, madam, you can't come any further. Oh, but I just want to know who the car belongs to. I'm sorry, madam, you can't come any further. Oh, please, thank you. No. Sorry. The late Miss Jackson. Don't give me any of that late stuff. Listen, I'm more village, labourer's cottage. Attractive young girl, expensively dressed, white jacket, a sports model. She walks into this cottage, sits in an armchair, takes some pills, is found there dead. Who was she? Well, I don't know. You've been I... out there all morning and you don't know? Well, nobody knows her yet. Oh. I've been in the room where it happened. I've talked to the woman who found her, to the man who phoned for the police. I know what happened when the police were there. I saw the police examining her car. In fact, I saw her car before they did. Where was it? Well, it was parked outside the local pub. You were in the pub? Well, I have to eat some time. Talking to Vickers makes me hungry. You ate before or after? After what? The girl. Before? I was sitting there eating when I saw the police car go past. Well, I didn't pay much attention, but when an ambulance went in the same direction, I followed. And it was parked outside this cottage. She just walked in. Well, the woman was just down the village and the door was open. How old was she? They say about 20. And she just parked a car and walked. How far? Like two miles. Well, the police examined the car. Didn't you ask them who she was? Well, they said they didn't know yet. They told me to push off. Who did? An inspector. I don't know. Bill, Highmore Village. Young woman found dead in one of the cottages there. I want her name and address. Well, she was a stranger. They didn't know who she was. They told me to push off. Who did? A rude inspector. Well, up at Highmore? Mm -hmm. Yes, I know him. He needs talking to her. Yeah, just get her name. You've got the contacts. Get busy. How far have you got? Just finished 1962. Yeah, let me see what you've done. And show me 60, 61. Love, look into those. The advertising's falling off. I'm a bit worried about it. Hello, Jack. That uh, girl up at Highmore. Yes, I thought you would. You haven't got a name yet, have you? 
Well, we are a bit against time, you know. It would help, Jack. Leighton? Yeah. L-A-Y. L-E. L-E-I-G-H-T-O-N. Diane Leighton. Hey, Jack, what about... There you are, you see, upper bracket. What is? Leighton. Diane Leighton. Well, how does that make her upper bracket? Yeah, it does, Frank. L-A-Y, she could be anybody. L-E-I-G-H, and she's county. Anyway, she lives at Mortimer Court, and that's strictly expensive. And he typed Jack. Did you get the number of the car? Yes. Local? Yes. Pick up a photographer. I want a picture of the woman and the cottage. Mrs. Ackroyd. And the man. Mr. Miller lives And the door. car. The police have it. I'll do what I can. Mortimer Court. Yes, sir. Your friend Char, will you give this address to just anybody? No, I shouldn't think so. Well, one day I hope would help. What, well, Hadley, you mean? Yeah, L-E-I-G-H. <laughs> you mean this girl just walked in? Oh, what so they say. Oh, Hadley, isn't it finished? Well, I'll have to use your car. Roger's out anyway. Right, then. Charge the petrol. Luxury. Yeah, and Hello, Jack. Get over here right away, will you? Cheers. Miss Brook? Yes? About Diane Layton. May I come in? The police have been here already. Who are you? I'm Susan Jackson, from the Gazette. Miss Jackson, I've got nothing to say to you. I was there. I saw the ambulance. I've spoken to the woman who found your friend. I would like to talk with you, Miss Brooke. How do you know my name? The porter. <sighs> See, sit down. I saw your friend's car parked out near the village. Does she have friends there? No. She did share this flat with you, though, didn't she? Yes. I suppose the porter told you that, too. No. He just said the police had been to see you and that you were here. Is this Diane? Why do you call her Diane? You didn't know her. No. Is it? Yes. How old was she? Twenty. And how long had you been sharing? Six months. Look, Miss Jackson, I know you've got some kind of job to do, but I don't wish to speak to you. Why not? I don't think Diane's people would like a lot of unpleasant publicity. Her people? Where do they live? The police must have asked you. I don't know where they live. I've never met them. I only know they must have doted on her to give her everything she wanted. Miss Brooke. Your friend parked her car outside the local pub this morning and went into a nearby cottage. A labourer's cottage which just happened to be empty at the time and took some... I know. What do you know why she went into no. this cottage? Or why she should do it? I don't know. Was she pregnant? It's not that. Are you sure? Quite sure. She's only had one boyfriend since I've known her and they were to be married very soon. I see. Who was the man? I don't know. Miss Jackson, I don't wish to appear rude, but I don't want to talk to you. Please go. I'm sorry if I've upset you. You can't upset me more than the news has done. But I want you to go. There's nothing more to say. She was well off, engaged to be married, Yet she walked into a strange cottage, sat in an armchair and poisoned herself. There must be a reason. I know of no reason. You still won't tell me the name of her fiancé? I'm sorry. I can't. May I borrow the photograph? No. I'm sorry to have troubled you, Miss Brooke. One more from here, and then one more of the outside. Very swish. Penthouse. Rather expensive. 700 a year. Huh? I've checked, and she has people. Where? Our friend wouldn't say it anyway. She doesn't know them. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Who's her friend? Miss Judith Brooke, with an E. <laughs> Does that mean she has people, too? In this case, yes. Where? I don't know yet. I've got five pictures. Anything else? Nope. Who covered the lot? The girl just walked in and took her life in someone else's living room. Your friend Chubb traced her 
people yet? No, that's a bit of a mystery as well. They've only got a car and a driving license to work on. She used to share a flat with a girl named Brooke, but she doesn't know much about her. Oh, I told you that. Too little tart sharing a flat. Mm, definitely not. Was she pregnant? No, her friend made that very clear. Chubb told me that the police doctors examined the body, and all they know so far is that she took some tablets, barbiturates. Sorry, they're late. All right. You said it was a photograph. Did you get it? Um, I asked, but I was refused. I got the name of the photographer. We'll be able to get a print. What beats me is that she was to be married soon. To whom? Her friend wouldn't say. Then you look up all the announcements in the Post and the Times, and you get a directory, and you look up all the Leightons beginning L-E-I. Who? Oh. You. There's the doorbell. Sit down. You've been out there. Do you think it's worth it? Worth what? All this work on a Wednesday. Are you sure? Look, we've got four good pictures, and one of the abandoned Jag, complete with the dead girl's handbag left on the seat, and now we've got one of the girl herself. Mm. You know, that old lady in the cottage doesn't get over the shock. She goes to the village to shop, comes back, and there's a dead girl in the living room. Oh, that's a point, isn't it? You walk into your own cottage, your own room, there's a body. Nobody knows who it is. And they don't. This is it. I didn't want to spoil your fun with Sue, but Chubb has been on to the directories as well. All the Leightons in the county. No luck. It seems that she just doesn't belong. Now he's trying all the neighbouring counties. There was a car board. In town. But they only had the Mortimer Court address. And how far has Chubb got? To Mortimer Court. No further. It seems that she and this Brooke girl met six months ago at a party. They were two of a kind, had a lot in common, both well off, so they decided to share a flat. The Leighton girl's daddy bought her the jag for her birthday, paid for her clothes and her share of the flat. Yeah, well, some girls have got the sort of daddies who put them into a flat on their own. Yeah, could be. Anyway, the Brooke girl never met her parents, so she doesn't know where they live. She got the car for her 20th birthday. Yes, went home for the weekend and came back with it, according to this Judith Brooke. Can we check the birth certificates? It's not a usual name, Diane Le Leighton. Chubb has checked, not in this county. And she told her friend that she was born here. He's going to try Somerset House, but it'll take time. Yeah, well, if she can't be traced there, it'll mean she was either born abroad or she's using a false name. Now, why? What's cooking? Well, nothing as yet, but all the ingredients. Five smashing pictures, a dead girl, a white jaguar, a daddy of one sort or the other, and a false name. Leighton, CB Solicitor. Cut it out, love. What? The private eye lock. Chubb's already checked. No luck. You knew! It's the boss, love, trying to get at you. No, I wouldn't do that. Now would I? Oh, if you had the chance. Have they tried them all? Right down to Leighton Zacharias, slag merchant. No luck. What do we do now? Have a bonbon. So, oh, a photograph is coming. What, mine? No, Mum. Hmm. Don't kick her out of bed. I said, what do we do now? You check the wedding announcements. And if your police pals have been so clever... Look, they've checked the birth certificates and there are no Diane Laytons registered anywhere in the United Kingdom in 1948, but they don't know about a wedding and that's your big chance. But does Frank think she was using a false name? Well, even if she was, she'd have to use it to announce her engagement if it was the name she was going under at the time. Mm, an alias. Why not? Westdale Gazette, Susan Jackson. It's for you. Hello, Bill Spence. Who? not very clear. It's Tommy Learoyd here, Mr. Spence. Will you remember me? Tommy Learoyd. I've given you news. Oh, yes, I remember you, Tommy. Well, you got a cold or something? Then why don't you speak up? It's about that woman. Oh, yeah, I'll speak up. About that girl that did herself in out of time or? Well, you're interested, aren't you? Thought you would be. I know a woman who must have known the girl well. Aye. And Mrs. Oddinut. Oddinut? Are you kidding me, Tommy? No, Mr. Spence, that's her name. Well, I know these things, don't I? After all, I am a freelance. Now, where do I know that name? That dead girl drove a white Jag Sports, didn't she? 
left it outside local boozer. How do you know, Tommy? Well, I'm observant. And I've seen that car pass out Mrs. Oddinuck's place several times. I pass it, you see, on my way home from work. And there's not many white jags about. Well, you know the hill outside Wheatley? Well, top of the hill, there's a lane off to the left. Down at the bottom, there's a big house set back from the road. Red roof. Yes, I'll hold on. You know that a hill outside Wheatley? There's a house set back from the road. Red roof, tiles. Oh, by their stables? Yeah. Yes, I know. Tommy, <clears throat> how about coming into the office? Well, if you're right and this is exclusive, then we'll make it worth your while. All right, then in the pub if you prefer it. Will Mr. Walters be there? Then I'll come. Oh, Mr. Spence, one thing about Mrs. Oddinut. She's a funny kind of woman. Not funny? In what way, Tommy? I'll tell you in the pub. All right. Hey, I just got a tip off a woman who probably knew the Leighton girl. That's her picture, by the way. It was a good tip? I think so, yes. Where is this woman? Out at Wheatley. Susan knows the place. All right. Her name's Mrs. Hoddinut. It seems familiar to me, but I can't place it. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? OK, get going. There's one thing. He says that she's a funny kind of woman. Funny? That's what he said. It's a funny kind of house. It's all in the trees. It's pretty creepy. I'm not sure I fancy it. <laughs> You're kidding. No, she's not. I don't mind anything in trousers after dark, but spooky houses and funny women who live alone. All right, Bill, you go. I can't. I've seen the contact. Tommy Leroy, so are you. Ah, oh, look, somebody must be joking. A suicide, a spooky house. What more do you want? Mm, things I do for the Gazette. <laughs> She'll probably beat you up, lock you up, and then bury you in the cellar, love. <laughs> a funny old ruin, living alone in a remote house. Abortionist? Procurist or not? Do you think Sue will be all right? Oh, don't worry about her. She can take care of herself. Yeah. Oh, look, everything gets left behind. Didn't you tell her I wanted to see her? No, call no, him? come on. Mrs. Hoddenut? Yes. May I talk to you for a minute? Of course. I believe you knew Diane Layton. What makes you think so? You were a friend of hers. No. I knew her better than any of her friends. She came to me for advice. Advice? Young girls like to know their futures. Ah, I see. Do you want a consultation? I'd like to consult you about Miss Layton. Girls that are going to be married would like to know what the future has in store for them. Well, I knew she was about to be married. She wasn't. But she thought she was, surely. No. She said she was. But she knew she wasn't. Well, what did you tell her? Nothing. She didn't already know.
They told you I was a witch. What do you think of witches, Miss... Jackson. Jackson. Some people are called witches and are not. And some people think they are witches and are not. It's very good. I must remember that. If Miss Layton came to consult you, my paper would like to know what happened. What paper? The Gazette. Ah, the Gazette. I used to advertise my services in your paper some time ago. Did you? Well, Miss Layton came to me about a year ago. I read the hands and the cards, that was all. I told her that she would be rich and happy. When she had become rich and happy, she came back to me. I never tell lies, Miss Jackson. When did she come back? About four times in the past four months. Why? To know the future. One glimpse and they come back. When they're unsure. What did you tell her? The second time, I mean. Nothing, but she couldn't have told me. She knew that. The third time she came, she said she was going to be married, wanted to know the future. What I'd previously read in her cards had come true. That was why she came. And you didn't read that she was going to die? No. It was a dreadful shock to me when I heard. But she knew she couldn't get married. She could have. But she wouldn't. She knew that. Well, will you tell me what it is you told her? Why wouldn't she marry this man? It was a personal matter, Miss Jackson. Nothing to do with health, if that's what you think. The future's a strange thing. It gives, and it takes away. Can I read your future, Miss Jackson? No, thanks. I don't believe in it. You're a journalist. It might help you to understand me. I'm in no trouble, not even with the police. And it could help you to understand. All right. said the future it begins in the past <laughs> she is you know a right and everybody around our place knows it you know I, I do mr walters i was up in the woods near her house one night <laughs> looking about like it was lit there was this light in the window the porch light was off like and this this dim light in the window and as I passed near the house, I heard this sound, like a lot of women, moaning and mumbling. So I went to have a peep in, and there were four of them, all kind of moving about. Four of them? Yeah, sort of. <laughs> and she was there in front, with nothing on. What, you got an eyeful, Tommy? No, no, it was all kind of shadows. But she was complete buffy, all right. What, Starkers? Aye, all four of them. Oh, dear, and you saw nothing? And then she was at the table, you see, crouching and doing this. Well, maybe she's a nudist. Sounds more like a black mass. I've heard she tells fortunes. Yeah, well, now you're talking a bit more sense. Let's have another drink. You're serious. Well, if she's an indiscreet fortune teller, Susan might get something on the girl. What do we pay him? Fiver. Uh, or two pounds. Well, we'll probably make on the national. We'll make it five. Uh, two now and two more if it stays exclusive. <laughs> you tell a good story, Tommy. It's true, Mr. Spence. And another two if the story is exclusive. Oh, aye. Cheers. I'm a prime target for bottom binches and metchers, and I'm going to be married twice. Twice. It's always the same with young girls. I tell them the past and the future, and all they can remember are the bits about men. Tall, dark, and handsome. Not for you. Will you tell me about Miss Layton? 
What more can I tell you? Well, do you know where her people live? No. Why couldn't she marry this man? She could have married him. And yet she couldn't. She had a fling. It went wrong. The future gives and takes away. You said she'd come into money. Money? I said money and happiness. And that happiness was, or would have been, this man. Would you tell me his name? It helped me so much to know. Have you met her friend, Judith Brooke? Yes, I have. And she didn't tell you? Well, she didn't seem to want to. Why? Diane was to marry Miss Brooke's twin brother, Simon. <laughs> You said you wanted to talk about Jimmy? Yes. A tricky wind and a bouncing ball gave promise of an exciting game with an attendance. Oh, he's used that opening before. No, I read it somewhere. Last time it was a dancing ball and a gusting wind. Yeah, well, I don't care if it's an abdominal wind and a medicine ball. Tell him to stop it. You haven't come to the best bit yet. Where? On top of the next page. Even the ranks of Tuscany could... could... scarce forbear a cheer. And that was the, go the uh, Rovers' first goal. Yeah, what was the score? One nil. Yeah, thank God for that. I'll rewrite it and give you a new intro. That's not the point, Bill. He's wasting your time. This is a lot of old rubbish. Smarten him up. Right. Get your fortune told, love? Yes, and yours. And yours. <laughs> and Colonel Chamberlain's. Everybody who's ever pinched my bottom has had his fortune told tonight. Oh, well, leave me out of it, will you? Mm, Mrs. Hodinut didn't. <laughs> Uh, what about the girl? Well, she was all set to marry Judith Brooks twin brother Simon. Well, get round there. Half for eleven. So? Well, do be reasonable. A flat may die today. If she's so oh. worried, she probably won't be able to sleep. So get going. Oh, if it's intrusion, don't say I didn't warn you. Uh, what did the dark lady of Westdale say about Frankie boy? Nothing he doesn't already know. That's a new gimmick, isn't it, eh? Telling your fortune from her hand. And yours. Now talk to him. Right. It's you again. May I come in? Why have you come back here? To ask you two questions, Miss Brooke, that's all. I may not answer them. Do you know Mrs. Hoddinot? Your friend Diane Leighton did. What is your second question? Still my first question. Did you know that Mrs. Hodinot was a fortune teller? Yes, I did. Well, did she ever say anything to Diane that upset her? I don't think so. Diane went to see her sometimes for fun, she said. Second question. Diane was going to marry your brother Simon, wasn't she? Look, what are you trying to suggest? Nothing. But you lied this morning, didn't you? I told you I had nothing to say. So I don't suppose you want to tell me where I can find him. You can't. Well, have they quarrelled? No. Simon is in France. They haven't met for a week. He's written to her twice. I've read the letters. They had not quarrelled. He was coming here to see her tomorrow. Because they were to be married soon? Yes. When? The date hadn't been set. We were going to meet her parents this weekend. This weekend? So you can see what a shock it's been. Simon was going to meet her father, ask permission, make the usual family arrangements, and the engagement would have been announced. Where does her father live? I don't know. Diane was going to drive us there tomorrow. In the county, north, I think. Didn't she leave anything behind with an address? A diary? No. I can't even write to her parents until the police let me know. Miss Jackson, why have you come back here so late at night? Because I thought you might have gone by morning. I shall have gone. Miss Jackson, will you go? There's really nothing more to say. 
Your brother? He won't be coming here. He's going home. We will see Diane's parents when we know. I'm sorry to have bothered you again, Miss Brooke. It's all right. I can see myself out. Good night. Good night. All the nationals have it. Yeah, but it's not much, is it? Aged about 20, overdose of drugs, believed to be police are seeking parents. Maybe all it's worth. We've all got the girl's name, so if it's her real name, the parents should come forward today. Yeah, but they haven't got a photograph and they don't know about her wedding, so we're still ahead. Yeah. Two pieces. Mrs. Holden up, Miss Brooke. What's this, Sue, about her coming into money? It was what Mrs. Holdenut said. Uh, quote, I told her she'd come into money. When she did, she came back to see me. For God's sake, she's only a fortune teller. How much money? Well, I don't know. Well, she said something else further on. Um, she had a fling. Fake gives and takes away. Well, I'm not quoting a fake fortune teller. Well, apparently they were going to see her parents today. Yeah, well, they must have something by now. Get on to Chubb. Yeah, if her name is Diane Layton. This is all right. Trouble with an exclusive is you waste too much time. Oh, well, that's not true. We've got a lot they haven't. For example? Hmm, pretty young girl comes into money just six months ago. Whoops it up. White jag, shares a flat. Meets a rich boy, brother of a friend, falls in love. Today was going to be a big day. Taking her fiancé to meet her father. But yesterday she poisoned herself. She could have married and yet she couldn't. There must be a story. You've got all this from a phony fortune teller. Well, she's not that much of a phony. She told me an awful lot. From the palm of your hand? No, Crystal. Oh, Crystal. Why didn't she see the parents' address in the crystal or that the girl was going to die by her own hand? I don't know. No, they're all things you can't check, aren't they? Now we'll get some facts. Yes, Bill? Nothing. Well, don't look at me. Chop Ch surprised as well as I am. He, he was in the mornings. He expected calls hours ago. Nothing. Not a tickle. Well, that must be a reason, Frank. Look, we wasted too much time on this already. We've got to get a paper out today. We wait until we get a lead. You keep in touch with Chubb. I want to speak to you about your woman's page. The galleys are on your desk. Yes? I'd like it a little brighter, please, like remembering the time of year. I'd like it to have a little bit of sparkle, a little bit of sunshine. I'd like all our special pieces to be a little cheerier, a little happier. All of them? Wherever possible. They're getting dull. They're making the paper dull, making a reader's dull. Scrap the first two parts, give me a new lead, and put something in that gives me a brighter heading. <clears throat> and Susan, keep a smile on your face. It might come easier. Yes, sir. Right, thanks, Fred. Take me down to advertising, will you? They want to check it. Right off. Right. Back already? Oh, it was a short court this morning. Colonel Chamberlain on the bench. You whizzed through it. Anything in it? Uh, three stories. Dangerous driving with 188 milligrams. House breaking on a council estate. Broke into his foreman's house. <laughs> Spite? No, I didn't know. Oh, right, one man didn't answer to bail. A warrant issue. Just so? I have. Uh, I've written this on him. What is it? His answer to the traffic problem. Yeah. He says he's been studying it for two years. When you finish the court stuff, look through those. Do me some fillers. Five lines, ten lines. All right. And keep it bright. Look, I'm sorry to keep bothering you, Jack, but if you do get anything, you'll let me know, won't you? Cheers. Well, I can't help you, love. They still know nothing. Oh, well, thanks for trying. Here we're going all bright. Yes, a laugh in every line. He says if you put a smile on your face, it makes the words come out with a sparkle. Bill Spence? Oh, it's you. Have you seen the morning papers? You've lost your two quid, Tommy. I don't think I have, Mr. Spence. I've got something else for you. What? Somewhere else that white jag's been seen. Well, it's not all that far from here. Out at Dimley. I've got a pal, you see, he works in the garage there. And he filled her up with petrol a couple of weeks ago. She drove in through the gates of a big house there. Alton Lodge. Alton Lodge, eh? Thanks, Tommy. And, uh, Tommy, get in here as quick as you can. And, Tommy, Mr. Walters can't wait to see you. We've got another lead, love. Come on. We've got more news on the Leighton story. She was seen driving into a posh country house a few days ago out at Dimley, Halton Lodge. 
Who's that from, Chop? No, Tommy Leroy. Well, dimly, it's our area. What should I do? All right, go and see whoever lives at Holton Lodge, but don't waste time. Phone it in if it's anything new. Right. You got the blocks made? No. Well, the only thing you should, just in case. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Not a single of that. Shouldn't that be double? No, a single. Single of that. And that. And the cottage across too. See to it, will you, Bill? School now, Lodges. Oh, a school, I see. Yeah, he used to belong to Major Butler and his family till they sold up and went abroad. Cup of tea, miss. Oh, no, thank you. Uh, when? Oh, some years ago now, miss. Oh. You haven't seen a young girl driving a white jaguar around here. I'm from the Westdale Gazette and... What's the matter? Oh, you knew her, Miss Layton? What's happened to her? Well, it, it's been in all the papers. Perhaps you haven't seen it. She was found dead yesterday. Were it car? No. She was found dead in a cottage. She'd taken an overdose of drugs. She... dead? Let me sit down, Mitter. Sorry, I... Just a bit dizzy. I've said something to upset you. I'm sorry. Well, I didn't know she was... Well, she were born here. This was her home. Her name was Diane Leighton. No, it weren't. Her name was Davies, same as mine. Mary Davies. She were... She were... My little girl. My wife died when Mary was 13. Her mother were cook up at Lodge. Major asked me to stop on in cottage and carry on as gardener, and Mrs. Butler, like, brought up Mary with her own two daughters, paid for her education and such. She were very good to my girl. Then they sold up and went abroad, and Mary were on her own, but she were educated good and she spoke nice. Then, about two years ago, she had a letter from a solicitor in London. Major died and he left Mary 9,000 pounds. Yes, sir. I knew she'd inherited some money. She wanted me to have some of it, but I wouldn't. It were hers. I told her to enjoy it while she were young. So she took money and went away. She bought a car, went to live with a friend in Wesdale. I never set eyes on a friend, but Mary used to come and see me. That's it. Taken when she were 16. May I possibly? No, it's all right. Last time she come, she were in a bad way. She were worried about her 
young fella she fancied marrying. She didn't tell me much. Just to say she were okay and happy and not to worry about her. I reckon she didn't like to bring young fella to see her old father. Seeing as I'm just a working man and living in this little cottage and she, we are rich friends, she just couldn't bring herself to let him see where she come from. That can't be true, Mr. Davis. That's a very old-fashioned reason. Why couldn't she bring him here? Why couldn't he meet you? Did you know this young man, miss? No. My girl did. She came here to tell me about him. She sat in there and cried. She was in love with him. But why should she do this? You ever been in love, miss? So much that you cried about it? You know, if he were in love with her, enough to take this? Now that you have heard the sad news, Mr. Davis, I think you ought to go and see the police. There'll have to be an inquest. I suppose there will be. I'll run you into West Hill in my car, if you like. And we can go and see the police together. Uh, very kind. There's just one more thing I'd like to ask you, if it isn't too distressing. Why did she call herself Diane Layton? Her mother were a Layton, miss. She took her mother's name. She were very close to her mother. Loved her. <coughs> Sue just phoned him. Diane Layton's real name was Mary Davis, and her father was the gardener at Halton Lodge. She killed herself because she couldn't face her fiancé finding out about her humble background. In case he changed his mind, eh? Well, that sort of thing went out with Ethel M. Dell. Yeah, well, she didn't think so. Oh, well, there you are. Well, the mystery seems to be solved, doesn't it? Yes. You've done a great job. She walks into a strange cottage to die. She felt she wanted to end her life where she started it. A simple country cottage. Yes. Well, we get this story no, hold top. on a minute, Bill. I'm not sure we should. Well, why the hell not? It's a scoop. It's going to cause an awful lot of distress to a heartbroken old man. Well, we know all that. All right. It's all right. We'll run it. But no sensationalism. Just keep it simple, eh? Thank you. 